DJ Ferris. Chicago, nigga. It's the real one. He back. Only one is pulling shit. Fuck up the. Let's get a sports talk. All right, guys. One year ago today, the Pelicans agreed to trade Anthony Davis to the Lakers for Brandon Ingram, Lonzo Ball, Josh Hart, and three first-round picks. Kendrick, the drama that precipitated this trade, well documented. But now that we have gotten the chance to see how both franchises use this trade to really level up respectively, can you say who won this trade, the Lakers or the Pelicans? They both won the trade because the Pelican got an all-star in the trade. Brand Angle went to New Orleans and became an all-star for the first time. And that's what L.A. wanted from him. But he had so much of the spotlight on him that he couldn't really develop into that all-star until he got to New Orleans when he was in a small market and he developed and became an all-star. Lonzo, Lonzo Ball, he made a big jump in New Orleans because – Magic Johnson told him, your jersey's going to be up in the Raptors. He didn't even let him play a game yet. So it was just so much falling on their shoulders in L.A. They had so much expectations, and they had to try to go out there and perform like they was preceded. Josh Hart, a solid guy off the bench for New Orleans. He was solid for L.A., but he made a big jump also when he went to uh, New Orleans. When you go to that small market, you don't have all that spotlight on you. Now, you could just develop your game in a small market, and that's what they did. And Red Angle got to New Orleans, and he became that all-star that L.A. wanted from him, but he had too much on him in L.A. New Orleans, it wasn't that much expectation for him, but he developed into the all-star, and that's what they got a uh, Lakers. They They... We can't no one see what Andy Davis and LeBron alongside each other. So it worked out for both of them. It's a win-win for both sides. Rachel, listen, this is the first time I don't know both teams won. When you look at the Pelicans, they got an all-star in Brandon Ingram, one of the most prolific scorers. They got the number one pick, Zion Williamson, who probably be the who might be the future of the NBA in the next coming years. They got Lonzo Ball, who's starting to step up and live up to the hype of the number two pick. So they got some great pieces back for Anthony Davis. Now, when you look at the Lakers, they got AD, a generational talent, one of one. AD, the way that he's going, and, and if he keep playing this type of basketball at the highest level, he could arguably go down as one of the best power fours of all time. And guess what? He's learning from one of the greatest of all times in LeBron James on how to be a Yeah, he learned how to be a winner. Andy Davis came in the league. The franchise was his. He was the face of the franchise for New Orleans. He ain't had that type of leader around him to show him the winning ways. Now he with LeBron, a good leader, who knew how to lead by example, and he followed suit because he had that, that veteran present right next to him to show him the ropes. And he also a big help for LeBron as well because LeBron is up there in A, even though he's still playing at a high level, he have another guy he can lean on so he could be able to rest on offense sometimes, let Andy Davis handle the basketball and let him go to work. So it's a win-win for both of them because they both can help each other out. How to be a professional and how to make a ton of money so they both won. <laughs> yeah, throw that in there. <laughs> I think the short term, the short term, Got to give it to the Lakers. I mean, what the Lakers are doing uh, this this first half of the season before the pandemic hit, uh, they were phenomenal. Number the number one team in the Western Conference, Anthony Davis, LeBron James leading the charge. Um, so for the short term, I'm going with the Lakers. Long term, I got to go with the, the Pelicans. I mean, you got. I think you're gonna have multiple All Stars in Ingram. Uh, I think Lonzo Ball can be an All Star because he's he's starting to pick up the game and, and is playing well. Um, we know Zion Williamson is going to be an all-star, and he's going to continue to get better and understand the game. So Pelicans in the long run, I think they... You see the numbers right there? Look at Brandon. Averaging 18 with the Lakers. 
made a big jump in New Orleans and averaging 24. That's what happens when you get out of a big stage and go somewhere that's smaller and it can it benefit your game and you take a big step for yourself. Lonzo averaging nine for LA. It was so much on him as well. And look, he made a big jump to 12 points. That's just a big jump for him because they had him as a bust. No, he would just had too much shoes to fill. When someone tell you that your jersey is going to be up in the Raptors one day, you try to go out there and do a whole lot as a young player because that bullseye was on your back. And now he get to New Orleans and he make a big jump for himself. He could potentially be an all-star because he coming into his game. Josh Hart, averaging seven in L.A., made a big jump to 10. Solid got off the bench. You see what happened when you you go from a big stage to a small stage. That's what they probably need. They probably ain't need all that on them. They probably needed a fresh start and get to a, a place so they can develop themselves. And that's what they did in New Orleans. They all developed. Brandon Ingram developed into that all-star. Lonzo could be an all-star in the future because his game is starting to pick up on his side. And Josh Hart's game started to pick up. He could potentially be a six-man down the line for New Orleans. So, long-term, New Orleans got their sales a good team ahead of them because Zion, he could potentially come all-star himself. So it's a nice team that's built around their number one pick. We have the upper hand on the Lakers unless the Lakers do something, you know, big uh, down the line when LeBron James is gone and hopefully they can keep Anthony Davis. Yeah, look, this trade is a great example, too, of how the value that you get is not just what's on the list, right? You mentioned Zion Williamson. The Pelicans drafted him with a pick they already had, right? But the fact that they had these other players who were just at the right age to influence him, not so much older, right, where, where it just they couldn't relate, but older enough guys like Lonzo Ball, say, who had gone through an experience where he got drafted and had a lot of attention on him. So he's able to activate and help Zion Williamson, Brandon Ingram, all of those guys. On the other hand, you have Anthony Davis, who, T-Mac, you know this, activated and helped LeBron James in a way does make all difference because once you're up in that age you're gonna need a, a fresh legs around you you're gonna need another guy to take the load off of you so you can rest doing in between plays and Andrew Davis helped LeBron out a whole lot and that's what the Lakers wanted they wanted another guy beside him to help him out to keep him fresh now he's still playing at an elite level but you know you're going to need another guy beside him to be able to take the Lakers back to a winning team. And that's what happened. When you pair the two up, now they are the number one seed before this pandemic came. You see, they was about to clinch the number one seed because that's what the Lakers were trying to get back into the short term. That's what they were looking for. But once he's the run going, they're going to figure out and build a team around Anthony Davis if they keep him for future reference. That is the difference between winning in the playoffs and not. Damn right. And I can understand why LeBron James wants to come back and play. <laughs> he, he smells it. <laughs> 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 I'm not mad at him. We're talking about ugly AD, the best two-way player in the game today. When you look at him, it's nothing he can't do. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube.